Good afternoon. Uh, I'll be very quick because I have uh, 40 pages to skim through in 20 minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be quick. Uh, first, uh, this, this session we're going to talk about uh, how I use the free and open source software in the visual effects uh, industry to do professional works. So uh, first, okay, about me. My name is Boon Sak Watanawisit, or you can call me Leo. Uh, I am, uh, back please. Uh. Okay, I am visual effects supervisor and uh, animation director, uh, storyboard artist, uh, screenwriter, sometimes uh, voice talent, and everything uh, about the video pr production, I, ca I have done it all. Uh, I'm everything but a programmer although I can write some uh, few lines of Python script. Uh, I, I never consider myself a programmer anyway. Uh, you can contact me at my email here. Uh, or how, I don't know. If you, if you want my email, you can contact me later. Okay, next. Uh, this is uh, what I have been doing for the past 20 years. I have been doing visual effects in this film. Uh, if you're from abroad, you may, n you may not know them, but uh, it's, uh, they are very popular film in Thailand. So uh, I also do uh, some editing, uh, a film editor in, in this film also. Okay, we'll talk about uh, what are the common softwares used in the digital content creation. Uh, I have categorized them into uh, many categories. Uh, at first, we talk about the OS. The common OS in the industry, of course, Windows or Mac. So uh, some might say that professional only use Mac, but that's not the case because you can find all kind of system in, in production house. Next, there are, uh, you have to, uh, use some kind of raster image editor, and there's no doubt the Photoshop uh, rule the world. Uh, nobody, nobody uh, never know the Photoshop for uh, retouching, for uh, drawing or painting. This is a uh, uh, one and only application that everyone turn to. Uh, for logo and graphic design, uh, Adobe Illustrator is the one. So, uh, also for the typography, for the text. Uh, the compositor uh, uh, is used for combining images together, uh, doing some green screen keying, uh, extract a uh, subject from the back background and add some text, some local, some uh, effects to the Im to image. So the uh, popular software are uh, Adobe After Effects, or in case of the larger studio where uh, composit compositing is more complex, they might use uh, Nuke uh, from the Foundry, or maybe some of them use uh, Flame from Autodesk. And we're on to the animation part. Uh, the, there are two kinds of animation we're talking about, uh, 3D and 2D animation. 3D is uh, 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 dominated by uh, Autodesk. They have two, two major software that dominate the area, um, Maya and 3ds Max. Why Maya, Maya is used for uh, character animation and film and TV, TV. Uh, 3ds Max conquers the, the arch which, uh, uh, architectural previsualization. Uh, because of is uh, maybe I don't, I don't know maybe it's because it's plug in that can render out a realistic image. For 2D animation, uh, Toon Boom has been in the industry for many years and uh, it's been standardized. Next, we need some simulation software to simulate the smoke, the fluid, uh, and crown. Uh, side effect Houdini is uh, the best uh, software used for smoke simulation. 
while real flow is a, a where you go to for the fluid simulation. And for the crown, uh, massive, massive prime is the software used behind uh, the, in the Hollywood film. Many major Hollywood films use uh, Massive for their crown simulation scene. And we also need video editor. Uh, two names that come up very often to, uh, is the Final Cut from the Apple uh, is, very, is the most popular among the professional because professional use uh, Max and Final Cut it seems more stable than Premiere. It doesn't hang as often as Premiere. And next for the color grading is about uh, changing the colors of the film, uh, beautify the image. Uh, we have the DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic. Uh, Resolve has been in business for many, many years. Uh, back then, they, s they sell the, the Resolve as a turnkey system, include uh, software with the hardware and a service. Uh, nowadays, they release the software side for free, but with some limitation. So you can try out the resolve yourself at home, but you know, with, without the, the con control panel, the hardware side, you can try software on your own. OK, that's a good thing. We have many options to choose from, but what's wrong with them? What's wrong with the proprietary software? Uh, first, uh, as, you, as you can see, they are owned by a few organizations, which is, may not be good for uh, uh, competition. And most of them are subscription-based. You have to pay monthly fee to use them, or they can be uh, highly priced very expensive to acquire, uh, except for DaVinci Resolve, which is free, and the pro version is quite cheap also. Now come the most uh, important uh, aspect of the, the using uh, commercial software for me is about the asset ownership. Because when you create your asset, your art, you're drawing something in Photoshop, your file is in Photoshop format. If you uh, run out of your subscription for Photoshop, you cannot open your files anymore. So your files are held ransom by the, the software company. Uh, if you don't pay for, for using your software, you cannot open your art anymore. This is a uh, questionable uh, aspect of the uh, software uh, asset ownership. Uh, the last point is the hidden cost called uh, the third-party plugin. Uh, most software can operate on their own, but to get the best result, they rely on some uh, third-party pl plugin. Uh, notable, notably, uh, the After Effects on their own, it cannot do much, but there are lots of plugins for After Effects you have to buy, and uh, in combination, they might cost more than the software itself. So, with all this uh, flaw, do we have alternatives? Of, of course, the answer is yes and no in some area. Let's, oops, let's ex explore the first. Uh, the OS, of course, Linux. Uh, I've been using Linux for uh, seven years or so. Yes, uh, but uh, the, the distro I like is uh, is the Arch based distro, which is a rolling release. So you have, don't have to reinstall the system every couple of years. It's just uh, update and you get the recent version. Unlike the Ubuntu, where uh, in maybe in five years you have to reinstall the whole system to get the, the, the latest version. And uh, I think the Arch is more stable. For the raster image, Nothing can replace Photoshop anyway, but we can get by with a uh, combination from GIMP and Krita. Uh, personally, I like Krita more for, for a painting job, but for the uh, retouching, for uh, manipulating the photo, uh, GIMP has done a better job. Uh, this is the 
uh, sample of work I have been using uh, Krita and Kim. Uh, this is Project Rama Avatar. Uh, we uh, take the wall art from Wat Prakao, the royal temple, and uh, move them and create the animation, 50 minutes animation. I, I'm responsible for the only five minutes, but that five minutes is uh, full open source, <laughs> you know. Uh, remember this project. We'll come back to it later, the Ram Avatar. Okay. The vector image editor in this area is uh, questionable because uh, Inkscape has been around for so long, but uh, I feel the, its development recently has, has been stagnant. It doesn't improve in, in many years. So uh, it can do a simple job like drawing vector graphics, but when it comes to uh, professional work, uh, the major flaw is it doesn't uh, read the CMYK color space from, from Illustrator, which is required for uh, the printing job. Uh, the customer's logo always come in CMYK color space, and uh, Inkscape cannot read that, which is uh, a little down. And I have to keep a copy of my old version of the Illustrator just for this purpose. This is the job I have been using the Inkscape to create the assets to draw the kind of gra graphics uh, to use in the uh, animation. So you can use uh, Inkscape, Inkscape to draw this kind of art. We don't have the time to watch them all, so I'm going to skip it. Next, the compositor. Uh, for combining images together, it comes as a surprise that I chose Blender for this task, but uh, Blender is surprisingly uh, stable for this job. Uh, it has a node-based system, like, a, like the same workflow as Nuke, so uh, you can get, if, if you can get your head around the workflow, you can uh, go to work with Nuke just fine. Uh, I have been using Blender Compositor uh, for many years for every job I have done for the past seven years. So there are many uh, jobs with that. For the animation, of course, Blender. Because this is uh, the main strength of the Blender itself, it is the uh, animation suite. Uh, uh, in the recent version, the 2.80, it adds the capability of doing the frame by frame 2D animation. So you can do uh, the kind of anime style, Japanese anime style, with in Blender 2. These are my works with using when, when I use Blender. You can uh, there's 2D and those that the corner upper corner one is 2D with uh, frame by frame animation. For simulation, Blender, again, <laughs> internal smoke simulation simulator in Blender is good enough for simple tasks, but uh, for uh, more complex tasks, it is quite lacking. It's slow also. Uh, and the fluid simulation is just acceptable. But the good news is there is a, a third party plugin for simulating the fluid is uh, being developed right now and it's amazing because it uses the same algorithm as the, the uh, commercial software. But the major pitfall is the crown simulation. Uh, it is non-existent right now. You can do some, some uh, dumb crown walking around mindlessly well, and bump into each other and piercing through each other, but not the way Massive handled the, the crown. Massive has the smart uh, actor, which uh, uh, the actor can sense the terrain and climb up the stairs, climb up the hill, and uh, when encounter an another actor, they can fight or they can run. That's, that, that's how smart they are. But we don't have that kind of system in, in 
any open source software, so this is lagging, and uh, I'm begging you, developer, <laughs> help me please. <laughs> uh, this uh, sample of my work, when I, this is my, not my uh, expertise uh, doing the simulation, so I only do the, the basic one, like a billowing smoke, and that's all. Video editor, Blender again. <laughs> Why? Because uh, uh, it's simple enough, and it and doesn't uh, it support many format, and that doesn't require you any more setup than uh, uh, other software. You can just drag any video in and cut and add some transitions, and that's fine. But it's lacking the professional features such as uh, import and exporting time code to be able to work with uh, the other de other departments such as, such as sound and color grading facility. So it's only good for amateur editor editing. It's not good enough for professional works. But I managed to use the video editor to uh, do some basic editing in, uh, no, I did not do this. <laughs> I, I, I edited the animatic, which means the uh, moving storyboard, draw the image and put it in, in sequence, in sequence before, before you make the, the real animation. It's called the animatic. So be, with basic editing, it's fine. You can uh, arrange the image on the timeline and add some text and add some voiceover. That's, uh, that's good enough for this kind of task. But when you want to cooperate with the, the professional in other area is, is lacking. Oops. Huh. Now comes to the area that we severely lacking the alternatives. It's the color grading department. We don't have any solution for this. Nothing. No. <laughs> but luckily, Resolve is free, so I can get by with that. But I really like some open source color grading software. Really. Please? <laughs> Any? I think because of the, the facility, you need, you need to you need to adjust your screen, you need to profile your monitor, and uh, every projector out there, you need the you know, color profile of, of them to be able to uh, correct the color, you know? So, it, it rec I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's a lot about, about uh, data gathering. Maybe it, co it costs too much, I don't know. I don't know why anyone hasn't haven't been there on this subject. Okay, now the good, the bad, and the ugly of the open source software. Benefit, of course, it's free. The main benefit, right? And it's fast. Uh, when when you compare the Linux to Windows, it's obviously that Linux is faster. Uh, at least in Blender, it it works faster in Linux now. Uh, and it's fun for, I think for most of you enthusiasts out there, it's fun to use the software that you can uh, tinker, can modify to, to suit your needs. And it's also simple to install and to maintain. There's no license manager or extra processes to run in background. So your, your good computer is uh, doing light work, just running the software you use. And it's safer because there's no bloatware install. You can choose uh, which component you want and which to left out. And the most important point for me is the asset. You truly own your assets. You can have uh, your assets uh, packed in your archive and along with the software you use. That's how I, I archive my project. I uh, put everything in an in external hard disk along with the software version that I, that I use for that project. And I can, I can 
be sure that I can open my asset anytime I like without paying uh, for the subscription or anything. Okay, when talking to the clients, the directors or producers, they, good news, they don't care what you use. They just want the results. If you can do, deliver the job, they don't care what you use. Uh, in fact, they're also, when they peek at my screen, they also, wow, what are you using? It looks cool. Yes, that's Linux. And, oh, when you talk to the investors or business owner, they also wow at first when they, they hear it, the software. Yes, they are skeptic too. Uh, what's the catch? The catch is uh, uh, for established, soft, uh, established business, they have their own pipeline already uh, done for many years. And switching to open source software, they need to uh, change all that. And that uh, might be uh, set back for their business. And also the thought of uh, ditching out their uh, software that they the purchase uh, exp with expensive costs, so might be scary. Oh, I paid for that $1,000. I have to dish them out away? That's scary. And for uh, the new business, the, uh, they, are, they are afraid of being left alone using the relatively unknown software and when, uh, when, they, uh, when they need help, they don't, don't know who or where to turn to. And that's their pain point for not using the open source software. Uh, when you talk to your coworkers or the co-production company, uh, they are also looking for cooperation. They need uh, the company or, uh, that use uh, the same pipeline as them. They need uh, their assets to be able to, uh, to be work together with, with their assets. So uh, to be able to, uh, to encourage the use of open source software, we need to ensure that uh, our assets uh, are interchangeable with the uh, proprietary software. Like uh, the, the PSD file, Photoshop files can be open uh, and display the same result in both Photoshop and uh, Gim and Krita and whatever and uh, with these other assets too. The hardest part is the 3D models because uh, the Maya format, the MB, MA is a proprietary and they won't release the specification so uh, no, no one can hack them and, and get uh, to read them properly. That's uh, the things to consider. Well, for uh, technical directors, their job is to uh, ensure that uh, the pipeline in the company works uh, flawlessly. So they are always, always skeptical that uh, isn't the open source software still in, in development? Is it finished? So uh, you are the developers. You know that the, there's no finished software. They're already released release cycle of the software, right? Well, you feature freeze and release and develop the new features and release. So there's no finished software. The only finished software is the date one. So uh, we can, I don't, I don't know, for the open-minded uh, tech director, we can discuss this. Okay, now back to you. How can you help with uh, the situation? Of course, I have already mentioned some of the area that needs uh, help. And you can join uh, the established uh, developer community. Uh, I suggest uh, look into Blender community. It, ha it is well organized and recently uh, get uh, major funding from AMD and Epic uh, with Unreal Engine. So they have a lot of money to poor way to you. Uh, and if you don't want to work with uh, the community, you can also develop the add-on or plug-ins on your own. And uh, it's better than uh, recreating the, uh, the kind of software from ground up because it takes time 
maybe many years before your, your new software uh, gets to be, get to the public and maybe you wither down along the way before it gets released. Now, come to, we come to my uh, not so well hidden agenda. Uh, remember the Ramavatar? Uh, the Amoeba film, the creator of the project Ramavatar, need to discuss with the de developer team to develop a new open source tool for their next project which involves the AI for Im image processing scripts to automate it, uh, the certain task asset man management system and maybe other useful tools you can recommend. They need this to meet the grants criteria uh, and the grant it, this, this one, NIA. <laughs> We're gonna submit the proposal soon. So if you're, you think you can help with this, uh, Come talk to me later, and uh, that's all. You can shoot me the email too. Thank you. Uh, any questions, please? No? <laughs> okay, then I'm clear. Thank you.